first we need to talk about, well, what's the interpretation of a vector-valued function? Okay, so let's interpret the derivative of a vector-valued function geometrically. And first, let's talk about what the function itself is interpreted geometrically. And it turns out that it's just a curve. A curve is a vector-valued function, and a vector-valued function is a curve, and there is a perfect and natural one-to-one -one correspondence, and you just can't ignore it at all. Because let's see what happens. We always pick a common arbitrary origin, and suppose that u of zero looks like this. Right? That's what it might look like. You just think to yourself, let me draw a random vector-valued function. So at value 0, maybe it's this vector. What does u of 1 look like? Well, it's another vector. Let's throw in u of 2. And if it's not a crazy function, it will probably, you know, that goes back and forth and crazy all over the place, right? It will have to be differentiable in some sense. And then a lesser requirement continuous in some sense, right? So it can be that u of 0 is here, and u of 0 0.1 is here, and, and so on, right? There has to be some kind of regularity. Did I tell you how to draw straight arrows from one point to another? You remember? You don't look at your hand. Maybe this is not such a perfect example, because it has a little bit of a wave to it. But this is a very useful skill when you're drawing things on paper, on the board, if you ever end up lecturing. So you don't look at your hand. You just start where you're supposed to start, and then you just look at your target, and your brain will just guide, magically guide your hand to the target. So don't look at your hand, look at the target. So this might be u of 2. What about u of 0 0.5? Well, I'll bet you it doesn't have to be exactly halfway, but it'll be somewhere over here. By if this function is at all continuous in any kind of intuitive sense, once we draw it, they all must come from a common origin. You can imagine that u of 0 0.1 would probably land somewhere over here. And now we almost have no choice but to connect the dots. And it ends up being a curve, right? Okay, that's what a vector-valued function is. It's a curve. It also works in reverse, right? As soon as you have a curve, let's start with a geometric problem, where there's no vectors of any kind. You just have a curve. People in ancient Greece would say, we have a curve, right? Now, how do we translate that into a vector-valued function? Well, we'll pick an arbitrary origin. That's one requirement, right? That's arbitrary, right? And then what we also need to talk about, an element that's here that I have to admit is kind of like coordinates. We're trying to stay away from coordinates, but now there are coordinates, so I'll, I'll, you'll see what I mean, right? We have to pick a parameter. We have to parametrize the curve. We'll have to say that this point corresponds to t equals 0. This point corresponds to t equals 1. I don't want it to be equal spaced, so this point corresponds to t equals 2. This point corresponds to t equals, maybe this one, 1 1.5, and so on. So to every point, I have to assign the value of a parameter. That's called parametrizing a curve. Okay, so before I end up with a function, I need to choose a parameter and parametrize a curve. Now, is that the same as choosing a coordinate system on the curve? Yes, that's what it is. So that's important. I acknowledge that we now have coordinates, whereas we didn't have coordinates before. Now there is coordinates. This curve has a coordinate system imposed upon it arbitrarily. Not, not the total free-for-all. Again, it has to be done in a continuous and maybe hopefully even differentiable fashion. We can talk about it more, but I think intuitively it's clear what it means that if this is t of 1, t of 2 is not back here. You can add some other stipulations that even in a smooth way we don't stop and go back and then go back again and so on. But it, all of that is intuitive. So yes, there's a coordinate system upon the curve. I accept that. 
However, what there isn't is a coordinate system in the ambient space. That's very important. So the space surrounding the curve is called an ambient space. Here, the ambient space is a plane, the plane of the whiteboard, but we could also consider the three-dimensional space and a curve in three-dimensional space that the tip of my marker is tracing out right now. Okay, good. So you need a parametrization, and as soon as you have a parametrization, you have a vector-valued function, because oh, I missed it. This is u of zero, this is u of one. Oh, I missed it again, <laughs> a little bit. I must be rushing. Uh, do you know why the Russians uh, hated Stalin? Because they were Russian, and he was Stalin. That's right. So you know, my favorite comedian, Norm MacDonald, he thought, I love, how can you not love Norm? He's the greatest. But, he, but for him, the ultimate joke, the perfect joke, was one where the setup is the same as the punchline. So I think he would really enjoy this joke because the setup is the punchline. It's just fantastic. Uh, and also not funny because... <laughs> uh, what a sad, sad country. Anyway. doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be, but it is. Yeah, so now, as soon as you have a parametrization on the curve, you have a vector-valued function u of t. So, to summarize, a vector-valued function is a curve. That's its most direct and natural interpretation. You can't hide from this interpretation. It's not some uh, semi-artificial thing where it's like, hey, I have a great idea for how to interpret a vector-valued function. No, you don't have a choice. That's what it is. It's a curve. And, and it's a curve that's automatically parametrized, right? Because when you start with a function, you already know that this point corresponds to t equals 2, and this point corresponds to t equals 1, and this point corresponds to t equals 0, and so on, right? So it's a parametrized curve automatically and naturally. And going backwards, if you have a curve, now you need to add two elements, an arbitrary origin and an arbitrary parametrization. And once you have those two elements imposed upon the geometric curve, you have a vector-valued function. So that's the interpretation of vector-valued functions. <laughs>